Hi, this is Tom Mura from World Class Coaching with another in our series of animated drills. This week I want to show you more of a training session than just one exercise. But what I like about this is that it's all based on one setup. So you can set the field up one time and with some minor adjustments, you can go through your entire training session from warm up all the way through small sided games on one field. Now the size of the field is gonna depend on the age of your team and the ability level of your team. I like to uh, do this where we put the halfway line about the same distance from the goal as the top of the box would be for that age group. So if you've got a team playing 11 v 11, then this is gonna be an 18 yard line from that goal and from that goal, so we've got a 36 yard field. If I'm training a team that say is playing on a field that only has a penalty area that's 14 yards, from the top of the box to the goal, then this will be 14 or 15 yards. So it's just gonna depend on the age group that you're working with, but you can do this session with every age group you have. You could do this with under 18 boys down to under eight boys, just depending on how much time you spend in each phase of the exercise. Maybe the warm up with the under 18s you go through pretty quickly, whereas with the under eights you're gonna spend more time there because they need more work on the technical component. So just depending on the age group that you're working with, that's going to dictate the size of your area along with how much time you spend in each phase of the practice. Now these cones I put between three and four yards apart. So in this setup, I've got them about three yards apart and I've got enough space here to where we could have 16 players. So we would have the players organized. And by the way, I also put the flags here at the halfway line just as a starting point because we're going to use those later. So I like to preset them so that we can just incorporate them into the session as soon as we get started. So we're going to include our players here on each side of the field. We'll put that player there and we'll put a player with their back to the play here. And let's make both of these players uh, the normal dark color that we use for the attacking players. So we have those players lined up and we'll have that same thing happen now in each of these grids going down the field. So as we go down here, we'll move the players there and we'll do that same thing. We'll just repeat them moving down that way. and We'll just put one in in each. Now to begin with, I'm going to have these players start fairly close to the cones. So really I want these players probably no more than about five yards away from the gate that they're working with. So we'll just scoot them in so you can see what it is that we're doing here. So we'll just finish off adding our players here. And what we're going to do to start with is we're just going to focus on a warm up here. So what I want is I want each player to have a ball. Uh, I should say each pair of players to have a ball. So we'll give each one a ball there. We'll make our soccer ball traditional. We'll make it white, make it a little larger so that everybody can see it. And we'll give each one of the players one of those soccer balls. So just to begin with, we're going to have this side of the field serving and the other side of the field volleying. Now, I like to start off with volleys in a shooting session because it allows me to really focus on the players locking their ankle. So they're just focused on toe down, lock their ankle, so that we're getting that first phase of you know shooting, that important phase really, of locking that ankle, having their toe down and out so that they strike the ball with their laces, and working on that to begin with so that we get the players thinking that right from the beginning. So we're just serving balls back and forth between one partner and the other. Pretty simple, you can have each person do 10 with each foot and then switch rolls, five with each foot, switch rolls, go back and forth. And focusing though on the laces. I like to do that to begin with. Sometimes with younger players, I'll also do the inside of the foot, just getting them you know, locking their ankle in a different way. So we'll do that. Then we'll have the players move forward and backward. So you know, say the server and this receiver here, they're going to move forward and as they move forward, then, and oftentimes what I'll do is I'll have the server move backward first so that the volleyer can move forward. Just a little easier action to begin with. So the server is backing up while the volleyer follows. So that person plays the ball back to them every time. Then we get here to the end line and we'll change it so that the other person is the server and now this person is the volleyer and we're moving backwards and volleying as we go. 
And so we'll do that a number of times so that we're moving while we're volleying the ball. Then I'll also do it the other way where the server is backing up and the volleyer is moving forward. So you can do it in both directions. I just think that's a little bit more challenging. So I like to start with the volleyer moving forward toward the ball uh, to get the exercise started. Now, once you've done that forward and backwards a few times, you can also then do it to the side. So I'll have this player volley the ball and then move the servers stay the same. The volleyer would then move to the next station and that volleyer would move to the st next station and so on. When you reach that end and you created or you completed your volley there, you would then go back to the start as quick as you can and then volley all the way until you get to your starting position. So now the players are moving sideways and volleying the ball. So they've got to reposition their feet, get their balance for a good volley. So again, all those things are just going over the you know, locking the ankle, putting the players in different situations, different scenarios where they have to lock that ankle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move all these players back. I was going to try to move them all at once. Um, we could probably do that if we selected them all. But I'll just move these back here. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to have, let's see if I can select all these at one time. Well, we selected all the soccer balls. So we'll move all them back. And we'll move the soccer ball back with them. And then we'll move each of these people back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have the players basically shooting through the goal, if they, if you will, so shooting through this gate toward their teammate on the other side. Now this begins as a static activity. So the players are just striking the ball, focusing on foot next to the ball, locking their ankle, striking through the gate. Now, obviously, as I said before, with older players, probably went through the volleys pretty quick, probably got to this really quick. With younger players, spending a bit more time, making sure they're getting the volleys right. And then you're going to spend a lot of time here making sure they're striking the ball. After we do this in a static uh, fashion, then we're going to have the player roll the ball out in front of them so they're striking a moving ball because that's challenging for the players to get the timing of that to, to catch up with the ball, get their foot alongside the ball, and then strike it. Not so much for older players. Perhaps with older players too, you'll have moved them back farther. But still, if we move them all the way back near the goal, we're dealing with an area that's as large as two penalty areas. So it should still be enough distance just depending on the age group that you're working with. You can also turn this into a game that we play indoor a lot called wall ball, but you can do it outdoor and it, it's similar to tennis in that one player is shooting through the gate or uh, through the goal to his teammate. If that shot misses and goes to the outside of the cones, then this player receives a point. If the ball goes through the gate, nobody receive a, receives a point. It's just received on the other side, shot back through the gate to their teammate on the other side. So you're basically penalizing mistakes in this like I said, as you would tennis. You can also put restrictions on it where the receiving player is only allowed one touch to control and one touch to shoot. So now you're challenging that first touch so they get the ball out of their feet and take the shot. And there's many different rules you can put on that, but you can make this a competitive activity. And you might do that from the start with your older players just to challenge them. Okay, so what I've done now is I've removed the gates and put the flags in the middle of the field. Now each player has a ball and we have one line positioned on one side of this goal and another line positioned on the far side. And so the players are then going to dribble from their side toward the flag in front of them. They're going to complete a move or a, a fake or even to begin with, you can just have them just simply dribble past that flag. And then we're going to have them take a shot from that other side. So they're over here and they're going to take a shot into the goal from there. So that same action is going to be completed on the other side. So we're going to dribble, push the ball past the flag and shoot. Now, obviously, you know, with younger players, you've got to focus on making sure they still get their foot next to the ball, making sure they're landing on the shooting foot, all the technical aspects. With older players, you can focus on the speed of their dribble toward that opponent. And I like using the flag here instead of just a flat cone because it gives them something uh, that is taller to avoid in front of them rather than just a, a flat disc on the ground that they're trying to dribble around and often will dribble over. So using the flag, I think, works well here. Now, there's obviously a lot you can do with this setup. You could have the players uh, go to the flag in the middle, check, turn away, and uh, away from that defender. So this player could run out and then check away from that flag and receive a pass from this next player in line. So they receive the ball at their feet and then need to turn around that flag. And likewise, you could create a combination here where the ball is played in, then laid off, and then played through. So you could create some angles of movement with that. So we could have the ball played, just for an example, ball played in here as a pass, 
and then the ball is laid back as another pass to the player who supports them. And when that player is uh, receives the ball and has supported them, maybe this player twists off to get in behind, and then we play a through ball into that space behind the defender in order to run onto and have a shot. So you can you can have some combinations. You can do it at different angles. You can have the ball played out wide. You can have it played through the gap, just depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So there's a lot you can do with that setup beyond just the basic, depending on the age group that you're working with. Now the next thing I'll do with this uh, setup is that we'll play a game. And this is one of my players' favorite games to play, uh, related to shooting especially. And we just call it half line because each team is... Uh, situated on their own side of the field, so they're restricted to staying on their side of the field. The coach plays in two, three, maybe four soccer balls. I generally don't like to play uh, more than two or three in this game just because there's going to be a number of shots taking place at the same time. So when a player has the ball, they're going to then take a shot toward the other goal, Need and they need to shoot from their own side of the field. So they can dribble up to the halfway line as close as they like, and then they're trying to take a shot now into that far goal. So if they shoot into that far goal, then they receive one point for each goal that they're able to score in the far goal. So that's you know continually going back and forth, and the players really enjoy that because there's a lot of energy, and players here are working to try to block the shots. The rule I usually use is that nobody's allowed to be the goalkeeper, so no one's allowed to use their hands. They have to use their body, their feet, and just like a field player would, their head, in some cases, if we're dealing with older players above you know, U13, then I'll allow them to head the ball away from the goal as well. So we're getting an opportunity now to shoot. And again, we set this up as the distance from the penalty area to the goal. So this is a distance that the player should be able to manage easily if they're shooting from outside the box, let's say. So that's just a fun game you can play. There's tons of variations you can use with this one. Obviously, you could take one person from each of the teams and you could have them trade. So now this player is on the black team and then we have a player over here that uh, becomes a yellow player. And so now the players that are on the opposite team are either working to defend try to win the ball here and try to score there. Or if a shot is taken in, then that player can follow on and, and try to finish any rebounds maybe that occur on that side of the field. So you could build that up to where you have you know two or more players in that area as well. So you're kind of building toward the game environment. Okay, so the last thing I would do with this training session is I would organize cones in a diamond shape, basically taking out the wide areas of the field and forcing players toward the goal. And doing this really encourages players to shoot, limits their options of going wide, so they need to take players on, look for combinations with other teammates working the ball down the field, and then looking for the earliest opportunity to shoot. Again, the field is only as big as two penalty areas, so everybody's close to the goal. There should be, you know, really the most important thing that the coach should be encouraging in this activity is the attitude of shooting, is the act of shooting. Now you can correct technique and, and decision-making along the way, but in in this environment, what you really want is players to become confident shooting the ball and feeling like they can score every time they get the ball, no matter where they are on the field, looking to take a shot. I mean, even if the ball is back here, we'll just move the ball back here. Uh, even if the ball is back here with this player, this player should be looking to take shots and these players should be looking to push on and, and maybe uh, frame the goal so that they can attack any rebounds that come in. But we should be shooting as often as we can in this game. So this is a great way to finish off the session with a game, but still focused very closely on shooting, you know, by limiting the space that you have on the field. So, you know, hopefully you can see this environment and how you might be able to use this with your own players. As I've described, you can use it with players at every level and every age, just with some adjustments. So I hope you like this one and give it a try. Let us know how you like it by putting a comment in the section below. Thanks a lot.